Hey everybody, this is example number one for structural dynamics for damp free vibrations. The problem statement that we have is uh, the damp spring mass system shown in the figure below has the following properties. It has a mass m equal to 0 0.0259 pounds second squared per inch, stiffness of 20 pounds per inch, and a damping coefficient equal to 0 0.1 pounds second per inch. So if the mass is suddenly released, with zero initial velocity from an initial displacement of two inches, we're asked to find the maximum amplitude of free vibration of the mass after five and 20 oscillations. So here's our damped spring mass uh, system. So we have this spring and it has a stiffness of 20 pounds per inch. Per inch and we have uh, some type of viscous damp dampening which means that the damping uh, force is proportional to the velocity of the mass and the damping coefficient is equal to 0 0.1 and our mass is 0 0.0259 pounds second squared per inch and we need to find the, the maximum amplitude of free vibration of this mass after 5 and 20 oscillations. And also, the initial displacement is 2 inches, and the initial velocity is 0 inches per second. Before we proceed to the solution, I just want to let you guys know that this example is brought to you by Bentley. And Bentley Systems is a software development company that supports the professional needs of engineers, designers, planners, and contractors responsible for creating and managing infrastructure. Bentley has tailored software applications for design, modeling, and analysis of buildings, structures, bridges, plants, and more. I have used Bentley's software and I can say that the software was very easy to use and the support that came with it was impeccable. Whenever I needed help, the Bentley team was there for me. And here's their website, it's Bentley.com. There's a link to Bentley.com and some of their YouTube channels within the description part of this video. So if you're a student and want to get familiar with the software and get a leg up over your colleagues during your job search, academic licensing is available through Bentley. And if you're a practicing engineer and you want to sharpen up your skills, they have a bunch of videos and webinars on their website as well as their various YouTube channels. So please check them out. And now coming back to our problem, the first thing we need to do is calculate the undamped natural circular frequency. And that's just simply equal to the square root of the stiffness divided by the mass. So we have our undamped natural frequency, uh, circular natural frequency equal to 27.79 radians per second. Next, we need to calculate the critical damping uh, constant, C, uh, CC, and that's equal to 2 times the mass times the undamped natural, undamped circular natural frequency. So our critical damping constant is equal to 1.44 pounds second per inch. After this, uh, we need to calculate the system damping factor zeta. And zeta is equal to the damping coefficient divided by the critical damping constant that we just calculated. So the, uh, the damping coefficient in the beginning of the problem, we were told that it was equal to 0 0.1. And the critical damping constant, which we just calculated, is equal to 1.44. So zeta, the system damping factor, is equal to 0 0.07. And this tells us if the system is underdamped or if it's critically damped or it's overdamped. So since this is... Uh, since zeta is less than 1, this tells us that our system is underdamped. And now we're going to calculate the damp natural circular frequency, omega d. And that's equal to uh, omega, which is the undamped uh, circular natural frequency, times the square root of 1 minus zeta squared. So our damp natural circular frequency is equal to... 27.79 uh, times the square root of 1 minus 0 0.07 squared. So it's 27.72 radians per second. Once we have this, we can calculate the damp natural period. And that's equal to 2 pi divided by omega d. 
So our damp natural period is equal to 0.2267 seconds. So now that we've uh, calculated all the different parameters, we need to get some type of mathematical expression for the amplitude of this system. So here is the uh, mathematical expression for the displacement of the mass of an under damp system. And it's equal to E, which is a mathematical constant to the power of negative zeta times omega times T. And then multiplied by the initial velocity plus uh, zeta times omega times initial displacement divided by omega D times uh, times sine of omega d times t plus the initial displacement times cosine of omega d times t. So we have to focus on, uh, we're asked to find the amplitude after a certain number of oscillations. So how do, we, uh, how do we write out an oscillation? How do we mathematically express an oscillation? And we write that by saying that an oscillation is equal to t divided by td, uh, the time divided by the damp natural period. So if we rearrange this, we see that T equals N times the damp natural period, number of oscillations times damp natural period, which, uh, which further simplifies to N times 2 pi divided by omega D. This is, the, uh, this is the formula that we use to calculate the damp natural period. So now what we'll do is take this expression, N times 2 pi divided by omega D, and plug it into this equation for displacement this expression for the displacement of uh, this general expression of displacement of mass for an underdamped system, and here and here and also here in these three locations, and see how this uh, simplifies even more. So we plugged in n times this should be n times td. Instead of writing td, we can just write 2 pi divided by omega d. So here's what we have. We, plug, we plugged in n times 2 pi divided by omega d here, and then here, and here. So what we'll see is that, let's look at the sine term first. So it's sine times omega d times n times 2 pi divided by omega d. So omega d cancels out, so we're left with sine times 2 pi n, and that means sine times 2 pi n, that will always be 0 if n is a whole number. So this whole sine term goes to 0. And let's take a look at the cosine term. We have cosine of omega d times n times 2 pi divided by omega d. So omega d will cancel out. So we're left with cosine times n times 2 pi. So here's our simplified uh, displacement now. We have this outside term. E, the mathematical constant to this power, times initial displacement times cosine of 2 pi n. And so n, if that's a whole number like 1, 2, 3, 4, this, this cosine term will always be equal to 1. So what we have is our expression simplifies to initial displacement times e to the power of negative zeta times omega times n times td, or n times 2 pi over omega d. So here is our simplified expression uh, for the amplitude. Once we have this, now we just plug in the numbers and we can get the amplitude uh, after, any, after n number of oscillations. So for five oscillations, now we just plug in the numbers. So the initial displacement is 2 and then e to the power of negative zeta is 0.07. The undamped circular natural frequency is equal to 27.79 radians per second. And the number of oscillations is 5. And the damp natural period, or 2 pi over omega d, is equal to 0.2267. So the amplitude uh, of our free vibration after 5 oscillations is equal to 0.22 inches. And then lastly, for 20 oscillations, we do the same process, but we just plug in 20, where we see n. And so the amplitude is equal to 0 0.00032 inches. 
And so this is the end of this example. Please subscribe to the channel. Please also visit our website. It's engineeringexamples.net and sign up for our uh, week. Oh, sign up for our email update where you can stay up to date on the latest content that we're adding. And also like the Facebook page. It's facebook.com/engineeringexamples. Thanks.